I'm Bliss, uh, co-founder and president of New Orleans for Lincoln Beach. We've been uh, cleaning up at the beach and keeping the water in that area, cleaning debris and glass. Hi, everyone. My name is Sage Michael, co-founder of New Orleans for Lincoln Beach, and um, we've been doing the cleanup and maintaining Lincoln Beach. So there we go. <laughs> Christine, I go by Sea Freedom, and um, I am a human being. And a descendant of Africa, so water is very essential for all of those things. And uh, yeah, I had the privilege of working with uh, water leaders and civic studios uh, before. So looking forward to learning more um, and also, um, you know, being able to spread more information to the community. Um, I'm just saying how proud I am of you all from, from starting it. Uh, it was Sage that um, introduced me to Lincoln Beach officially. I've heard of Lincoln Beach. But I never uh, went to it. I knew how accessible it was, or how I say how inaccessible it was. And to to understand that the direction that I give people, this is how I go. I say, walk well, up the concrete uh, slope, across the <laughs> short fence, down the wooden ladder, across the train tracks, through the woods, to yeah, to the sand, to the water. Right. We had the privilege of bringing a, a seventy-four year old sharecropper to Lincoln Beach, getting him over the wall. He hadn't been there since he was 15. Um, Irma Thomas is one of the only, I believe, I'm not sure who else performed there, but to my knowledge, that's one of the only uh, living performers that I know that used to perform at Lincoln Beach right now. It would be such a shame if we missed the mark of making sure we make, make this place accessible for the elders that are still here. Lincoln Beach is a place that was reserved only for black people back in the 50s where black people were coming back from the war and fighting for their freedom. They wanted to be at Pontchartrain Beach or everywhere, but the government entities at the time said, no, you can't go anywhere. They used to go to Seabrook and a lot of black people died at Seabrook trying to recreate there. And then now they, they developed Lincoln Beach, which is a joke within itself, a person supposed to free you. They put a box and say, in the middle of these woods, you know, here's Lincoln Beach, 17 acres, and y'all have that. And um. It was neglected after desegregation because they didn't need a separate but equal facility. So they just shut it down and said, you could come to Pontchartrain Beach, but you know, you're not welcome, even though they say you can come. Um, it's, 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 it's notorious. Pretty much um, the levy board in conjunction with the city segregated the water. They have a police station at Elysian Fields, which they created Pontchartrain Beach in front of that, which is their heaven. And, and then they created a white side of the lake, which is to the left and a black side which is to the right. It's all kind of disparities that we face with the levy board, the levy district, and we just love the water we are drawn to our, like bless say. I grew up playing uh, at that little area of beach by the Seabrook, I guess, or by the boat launch, and um, had no idea that this was accessible um, until I saw Sage's uh, videos. We didn't learn about these things in school. All right. It took Sage, this brother, to go to a space that he felt would be even more safe where they try to make it as it's not safe. It took him to have to deal with the pain of Black people getting killed and find a place where he can go and be by water and heal to say that this is what we got to do. I think it's a crime. I think it's a, it's a crime to uh, not allow the citizens to know about it, for one. It doesn't have a sign, for two. There's no education on it. Three, people live and die and never heard of this place. They don't know they got a place to go for their healing. Lincoln Beach is about healing. That place is special. It's different from Pontchartrain Beach. You know, Pontchartrain Beach is three times as large as Lincoln Beach. But everybody got their eyes on Lincoln Beach right now because too many times that people of color around this nation do not have access to water. That's where we meet creation at. That's where you have water coming across the lake, fresh mineral water you can soak in. You have aches and heels and cuts, you're gonna soak in that water, you will be healed. You're breathing the wind coming across the lake, fresh wind. All you're gonna breathe wind coming from the forest of trees, full of oxygen. You're getting fresh air all day that God provides. Everything you need is on the land. We could farm on the land, we could live on the land. That levee, 
does not keep water out the city. Katrina showed you that. Betsy showed you that. It got cracks all over. It increases global warming, which is another problem. It's a concrete jungle all the way around. It's money spending. Those people who take the levy take the land around the levy. And that's the most valuable land in the world, beachfront property. And it's not about the levy because the levy don't work. It's a prison wall to keep you away from it. Keep that whole community that's making a right on Vincent from making a left in Lincoln Beach. And you know those people in that community with gunshots going on every day, shooting going on every day, need somewhere they could go and heal themselves without paying arm and a leg. And that's Lincoln Beach. And it's a crime that you just found out about. And that's why we put a light on it. That's why we made those posts. That's why we, this land is my land, this man is, this land is your land. This land's made for you and me. That's their song. That's our song. I can't be trespassing, it's my land. And what we are seeing today is collaborative leadership emerging in a way where when you bring all of these assets and strengths together, you really start a movement. And I think the power of a movement in making the case for one, what is valuable, two, recognizing the asset and really rallying people around it is probably 80% of the work to get government's attention. One of the first uh, cleanup efforts we did, uh, we used to do uh, clean up and chill on Sundays where we would tell people that uh, cleaning up isn't mandatory. <laughs> We just wanted people to really view the space and, <laughs> and see what was still, you know, make them aware of it. But um, we got a, a really, we got a lot done. Um, and that's when we first realized that, hey, you know, people are serious about this too. And they just, people started bringing out their tools, donating money, um, donating supplies. As you see this, uh, what is that, a Jack? They pulled a gate up out mm. of the, um, there was this gate that was jammed into the, the sand and uh, they pulled it out and uh, mm. allowed the sand to really flow flow back and give more space. Um, a lot of the, the guys got together and um, cleared the trail. So first it just was, let's start cleaning up the debris. Then it was, let's make these paths safe for people to walk through. And um <sighs> We cleaned up over eight tons of trash and was able to push back the usage of the sand that, that was there. When we got there initially, I, I would say it's about two thirds more uh, sand being used for people to you know, sit and hang out and do whatever um, than it was when we first got there. We, have, we bear many scars uh, from um, <laughs> our work we do. Uh, I think that when we people talk about cleaning up the place, we look at our, our scars on our hands, and cuts on our feet, and, you know, bites by the spiders. We, we are warriors. We are, you know what I mean? Like that's fresh. We are, we are warriors. We, we, we tackle wild land that's been neglected for over 50 years in every way in every way and we, we feel passionate about it. We, our heart is connected to it. So cleaning up lead us to being environmentalists. It's not just trash. Cause now Bliss, Bliss could tell you, we see how the grass is growing in the water. The water plants are growing. We see crabs and the pelicans and all the seagulls and all the herons is coming in and they are now coming into the land cause it's a wetland environment. You know, it's a beautiful place. And because of the work that we've done as a community, Getting photographs, I got to sh shoot um, aerial video and photos of the space um, other people have. And that's the way that people are like, wow, what is this? What is this? N people didn't even know about it. So it's like sharing those images and, um, and raising the awareness of the space. Um, I think that that's very important to let people know what we have and what we need to protect and what we can't let the city sell and what we must demand that the city make right because they did, did us wrong for so long. They did the space wrong for so long. Initially, our strategy was to show uh, images on uh, Instagram. Instagram was where we show all our progress and what we were doing. And we weren't really saying too much. And the Facebook page is where we put all the history and let people tell their stories. And um, 
their experiences. And they would also share like old articles and things like that. So um, we kind of kept it separate to keep the movement and, you know, kind of keep them going to both spots, but having a different experience, you know, in each one. Uh, by Bliss and I um, cultivate the voice of Lincoln Beach. I think that's what did it right there. When when we when we engaged with government and we let them know that now we have a Facebook group of over eight thousand members, that's a number that's sticking their head. Uh, yeah, so you know that that's that's not easy to do. And when we post a post on our group, it goes out to everyone. It's a it's an affinity group. It goes out to everyone. And 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 just know that we our our theme is to biblical principles. Let our light shine before men. Do not hide our light under a bushel, and just work with all people. One thing we want is that we have principles that this is not your typical uh, approach to engaging with government. We have 17 acres dedicated for Black people, dedicated for New Orleans. That's that's our say history. We feel no safe place in New Orleans. We grew up gentrified, pushed out of our own home. We don't have the lower night wall. We only have New Orleans East and we barely holding on to that. But we have a place, 17 acres, that just for black people and I own it. I'm born in New Orleans, Charity Hospital. And that's why we call it New Orleans for Lincoln Beach. We welcome all people, but bliss is for New Orleans. We born and bred in New Orleans, see freedom. We have to have people born and bred in New Orleans structuring this project alone, who has a connected passion. When I think about waterfront development, when we think about what's happening at the riverfront, when we think about Crescent Park, World Trade Center, these are all huge multi-million dollar projects. There's a lot of money in waterfront development. And so we think about all the big players, the mm -hmm. convention center, we think about Chalmette, the refinery, we think about the Army Corps, so it's really hard for citizens to even see a place for themselves in thinking about the future of waterfronts, the port of New Orleans. Um, we're, we're, we're all too small. And, and so I think what's so inspiring about this is you guys are asserting a right to have a say in what happens with the New Orleans waterfront and that profit and that a certain kind of high rise development isn't necessarily what makes the most sense. And that there's this whole legacy and history that needs to be honored at the same time. So initially, their response was they did not want us to post pictures from back there. Um, that was the initial response. Don't post pictures because you're trespassing. Um, but at the same time, there were tours going on um, to investors. There were helicopter tours, people coming in on helicopter, people coming in by boat. And um, how we, <laughs> our first interaction with government was, uh, Sage met Cindy when uh, she had an interview. She was doing an interview and he wound up also speaking to the reporters and the interview wound up being mostly about what he had to say. And, and so from there, it was kind of a thing. And then um, I guess when that got to be, you know, she came to the beach and she spoke to our group and, and um, then the mayor uh, eventually gave a speech saying that the city of New Orleans cleaned up, uh, cleaned up Lincoln Beach, and it seems like a lot of people didn't like that. So, so initially, their response was they did not want us to post pictures from back there. Um, that was the initial response: don't post pictures because you're trespassing. Um, but at the same time, there were tours going on um, to investors. There were helicopter tours, people coming in on helicopter, people coming in by boat. And um, how we, <laughs> our first interaction with government was uh, Sage met Cindy when uh, she had an interview. She was doing an interview and he wound up also speaking to the reporters and the interview wound up being mostly about what he had to say. And, <laughs> and so from there, it was kind of a thing. And then, um, I guess when that got to be, you know, she came to the beach and she spoke to our group and, and um, then the mayor uh, eventually gave a speech saying that the city of New Orleans cleaned up, uh, <laughs> cleaned up Lincoln Beach. And it seems like a lot of people didn't like that. So as far as speaking with them, um, when they came to the beach, they were just speaking about what, what kind of cleanup they had done thus far. And 
giving ideas of uh, excess. Their focus seemed to be on excess and um, building some type of bridge or walkway over. And definitely is speaking about putting a water park where the parking lot used to be. So we just wanna make sure that whatever they're doing is not gonna cause um, problems for the neighbors. And um, that, you know, the people have a say in, in what's going on, that they're just not developing it in a way that attracts uh, more tourism, but not, you know, drives the, the people who are living there out. But uh, we discovered a lot about the water for ourselves that we uh, just weren't made aware of. And it's um, truly a pleasure to meet all of you and to see how we can work together to make sure that when they open Lincoln Beach, um, it'll be a safe place that the environment is respected, that we're not just coming in here with things that will, um, you know, cause more debris and destruction and just, you know, just another thing they're slapping up on, on, on the beach. We would like to see everything respected, um, is in particular the water, and to not have like motorboats and things like that to kind of regulate the fishing so that people are not overfishing, but that it is allowed, you know, to happen. Engaging with government is not easy. They are, they are accustomed to engaging on the other approach where community gives feedback. We not in the position to give feedback. We want to um, clean up, construct, operate, facilitate, and um, guide the revenues. Yeah. You know, cleaning up is a way in, but that's just a way in for them to see what we are capable of. And we just organizing. Now we have an organization, but it's the president. Of a major organization that has the voice from the ones from the and, and we are engaged. We have engaged from the city council level. We engage on the mayor administration level, and we engage on the state level. That's what we're supposed to do. Our politicians represent what we want. It's just simple democracy. This is what I was taught, and we are just exercising simple democracy. It's it's, it's real simple. God provides us everything we need. Whatever we need, the community provides. Whatever we need, whatever the number is, God provides. It's just that it's amazing. I, I I just I'm amazed every time. I just smile because whatever we need, God provides. And let us know what we need. That's the communication and relation with the government, who are the experts that we hire, that we give our tax dollars to, who work for us. And they hire other people in other departments with our tax dollars, Department of Public Works, Environmental, and all that, right? They work for us. So I'm walking with them, I feel empowered that you work for us. You represent what we want. The thing is, you have to find out what we want. And that's the whole thing. And we're in a position to do that. When I say that I'm a human, one, we all need water. Uh, when I say that I'm a descendant of Africa, it's been a part of African spirituality to be near water. So when we are cut off from the water, that's cutting us off from ourselves. That's cutting us off from the that we need as people, period. So when I see people coming together on Lincoln Beach, we have sisters coming there who are doing spiritual cleansings, who are maybe practicing voodoo. And we also have sisters coming there who are coming for their birthday, celebrating and doing a baptism, celebrating uh, Christianity and different things. People coming from different religions, different ways, but it's all about healing, coming together and connecting with God. I just want to say that you know, like we've gotten a lot of flag, a lot of people saying, oh, don't bring, don't, don't encourage people to come because it is dangerous. There are gators in the water. There are gators in the water. But I mean, we were able to do that. We, we kayaked in this water, we canoe, we, we've done all kinds of stuff. We, we're not encouraging people to do what we've done. We're just showing that it was possible for just regular people who are not, I mean, we're environmentalists at heart, I guess. You know, I was that kid yeah. that outside every day. I don't have a title or a PhD <laughs> in it, but that's my point. You know, that is the whole point that I think that's something that we're definitely missing and that I've seen a lot of people come out there and feel better, feel healed just by breathing that oxygen, letting their feet touch the sand. And um, for me, it's, you know, it's worth fighting for and I'll learn whatever I need to learn, you know, <laughs> say whatever I need to say <laughs> in order to get it done for the people in a way that everyone can have that experience and come out and heal 
and not just, you know, a lot of people come out there, what can I sell here? And it's like, no, how about, <laughs> you know, how about you touch this water first? You know, it's clean this water on the lake. Alligator found a good place to stay. And they don't bother anyone. They don't bother anyone. They go about their business. They don't like too much noise. <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> we got Gus, the alligator, he on my side. We got Felix, you know what I'm saying? We got Russell the raccoon, okay. the silverback. Um, 